What's going on guys? I'm Chris and today I've got a very special video. Uh, I'm going to be going through my top 10 favorite comic book movies, but I'm not doing this alone. I'm joined by Trevor from Film Geeks, a great YouTube friend. Trevor, how you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks so much for having me on. It's my first time uh, doing a video with you, so I'm very much looking forward to it. And dude, let's just get into it. We're going to have some different opinions for sure, but I'm excited nonetheless, that's for sure. No, yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of fun here. And the way this video is going to work is we're each going to take turns giving our 10 through 6, then our 5 through 2, and then we will each give our number one favorite comic book movie. So without further ado, I guess I'll go ahead and get right into mine. Uh, we're also going to have some honorable mentions, so I'll go ahead and rattle some of those off, and then I'll let Trevor do the same. So some honorable mentions for me are going to be The Avengers, Batman Begins, Logan, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Trevor, do you have any honorable mentions? I have The Avengers, 2008's Iron Man, and I also have Batman v Superman. I'm a diehard Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition fan. I really am. We could make a whole video about that, but we won't yeah. get into that now. <laughs> I'll go ahead and give my number 10 and start with my list. So coming in at number 10 for me is actually Joker. Uh, this movie came out last year, and Joaquin Phoenix gives arguably one of the best performances of the past decade and probably the best of his career. He really does transform into Arthur Fleck uh, slash the Joker. He really just goes for it, and I like that you get to see – his mental deterioration, as well as him playing the Joker. And he kind of gets two characters, unlike a lot of the other uh, Jokers, like Heath Ledger, who's great. But uh, the fact that Todd Phillips got to make this hard R, dark comic book movie for the DC world, it's really uh, a testament, I think. And I think this movie will stand the test of time because it sparks conversation. That's what great movies do, and that's what this one has been doing since it came out. Coming in at number nine for me, this is gonna this is going to be where the controversy kind of starts because this is a movie that everyone loves, and that's The Dark Knight. That being said, I love this movie. It's just not as high on my list. Um, I think that it's one of Christopher Nolan's best movies, probably in his top three. It's not It's not my favorite for sure, but it's still really great. Uh, I think that Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, one of the best of all time, easily. I mean, one of the most iconic performances ever. And the score by Hans Zimmer gives me chills every time I listen to it. It comes in at almost two and a half hours, but it feels like an hour and a half. And the opening sequence locks you in. I'm not crazy about the third act, but all that being said, I still really do enjoy The Dark Knight. Next up for me at number eight is going to be Deadpool. This is like the first R-rated comic book movie that I truly loved. I think it was the, actually the first R-rated comic book movie that had a massive box office success. Um, Ryan Reynolds as this character of Deadpool. I mean, I've probably seen this movie 10 to 15 times. It's very hilarious to me. I think that uh, it's got some great quotes and very, very rewatchable, if I'm being honest. Uh, Ajax, he's a fine villain, but I mean, I really do love this movie for what it is. Some people say it's dated. I highly disagree. Coming in at number seven for me is the first Spider-Man movie directed by Sam Raimi. It came out in 2002. And I think that Norman Osborn, played by Willem Dafoe, a.k.a. the Green Goblin, is one of the best, like, comic book villains ever. Uh, he's so cheesy and over the top, but very menacing at the same time. And mm -hmm. I think this is the best Spider-Man origin story that we, we're ever going to get, honestly. Uh, Tobey Maguire, he's a great Spider-Man. And that scene with Uncle Ben really does, it breaks my heart in a way. I love this movie as well because James Franco's in there and you get to see his friendship with Peter and you also get to see Mary Jane and just this dynamic is formed, sets the stage for the rest of the trilogy. And like I said, it's probably the best Peter Parker origin story we've gotten. Coming in at number six for me is Captain America, The Winter Soldier, the directorial debut of the Russo brothers in the MCU. And this it easily has some of the best action in the MCU from like the highway fight scene uh, to the elevator fight scene, to the final fight on the ship. Uh, I think that the stakes are very high, and there's some reveals here about uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. that are monumental to the MCU. Alexander Pierce, played by Robert Redford, one of the better MCU villains, in my opinion. And all around, it's just one of the best action thrillers we've gotten ever, and it changed the game for the MCU. All right, so now I'm going to go through my 10 through 6, and at number 10 for me is none other than Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. I am a diehard Superman fan, and Man of Steel is the, the epitome of a Superman movie. I know this movie gets quite a bit of flack, but from the score to the action to the overall of Henry Cavill just being ultra badass, Man of Steel for me, just it hits me in the right places, and I love Man of Steel with my whole heart. Number nine, Logan. I think this is a step in like the crazy good direction for the X-Men universe, and just because... Like, we all love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, but we also love the character of Logan just as much. And to see him finally have it and just go all out, well, guts blazing, and he just action-packed, gore to the max. And Patrick Stewart honestly gives the best performance in this movie. Should have gotten nominated for an Oscar, but their dynamic is hilarious. And it shows that the mutants aren't really big and popular anymore. And these are kind of two of, like, the last couple ones. And 
I mean, it, what an action-packed, gory, and honestly emotional movie. At number eight, The Dark Knight Rises. I prefer The Dark Knight Rises over The Dark Knight. Tom Hardy as Bane is my one of my favorite villains of all time. And from the action to the score to the overall just plotline and story of this movie that Batman hasn't been around in like 10 years, to see him come back and see him face adversity worse than he ever has, has to rise above out of that prison, come back and just whoop some ass, man. I love The Dark Knight Rises so much. It's The Dark Knight is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but if I'm going to rewatch a movie, The Dark Knight Rises is going to be the one I rewatch the most. And at number seven, I think oh, you had this in your 10 through 6 as well, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, what do you, what's not to love about this film? And that for the first 30 minutes or so, you don't even really know that the Winter Soldier is going to come in until he does. He makes that entrance, and then Chris Evans, Captain America, Steve Rogers, just finds out that Bucky Barnes, one of his best friends, that's emotional. That's a gut puncher. And this movie's not even like a superhero movie. I know everyone says it, but it's more of that spy, really deep, methodical, kind of like almost a thriller of a movie. It's so exhilarating, and the end, the, it packs that emotional punch with Bucky and Cap, the end fight, and what Cap says is him, I'm going to be with you to the end of the line. That hits home. Hits home for lots of people. This is a top five MCU for me. Love the Winter Soldier. And at number six, on a much lighter note, Deadpool. What's not to love about Deadpool? It's Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds at his best. And what's not to love? As I said before, this is another great step just for the X-Men universe. Deadpool is funny. It's unique. It's different. It breaks that third wall or the fourth wall, whatever you want to say, call it. But Deadpool is not only funny, but it's also badass. The CGI is great, and it's different. It's a different movie than I've ever seen before, let alone a comic book movie. Deadpool accomplishes something very few movies do, and for that reason, it's at my number six, and I love it so freaking much. All right, so now I'm going to get into my five through two. Now, these are movies that I hold near and dear to my heart, so it's really hard to place them one higher than the other, but I'll just go ahead and get right into it. Coming in at number five for me is Captain America Civil War. Talk about a movie that makes you really torn inside because I love Iron Man, I love Captain America, and seeing them at odds, very hard to watch because I really do love Iron Man, and especially at the end, there's a shocking reveal that just makes me really pour my heart out for Iron Man, and like, it's it's gut-wrenching. This movie's gut-wrenching, and you get introduced to Black Panther and Spider-Man, both in their MCU debuts, and the scene where Spider-Man gets introduced, it gives me chills. Like, I love the music, it's used so well, and Tom Holland's the GOAT, but the airport battle, one of the best action scenes in the MCU. Really, what this movie just does so well is, it has the character of Zemo, and he he's not the basic villain, because what he does is he tears apart the Avengers, and he achieves his plan. So in that way, he is one of the best MCU villains, and I love Civil War, I really do. Coming in at number four for me is going to be the one that started it all, Iron Man. Just a classic to me. I've seen this movie so many times. I can probably quote the majority of it. But uh, the arc of Tony Stark throughout this movie, going from that cocky guy in the Jeep at the beginning who's like, oh, no gang signs, please. I'm kidding. Throw it up. Like, I just <laughs> – he's so quotable. And then he's like, good God, you're a woman. Like, he has so many, like, snarky one-liners. And then he gets to see this devastation firsthand as he has to get his way out of the cave. And then when he goes back to America, he really has this realization that I'm making these weapons that are being used to kill people as acts of terrorism, and I don't want to be a part of this anymore. So you get to see his arc, and then at the very end – when he says, I am Iron Man. It's one of the best endings, not only to the MCU, but a comic book movie in general. Coming in at number three for me is what some would consider the best animated film of all time, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I haven't seen this movie as much as others, but on the few watches that I have had, I just have an absolute blast. The animation style itself, so much attention to detail. It really does feel like a comic book has been put on screen. Seeing, like I said, Miles' story, especially his relationship with Uncle Aaron, that's the stuff that punches me in the gut. Miles has to really learn to kind of find his own way uh, after some things occur in the movie. I won't get too deep into spoilers, but there's like a leap of faith scene that is very powerful. Of course, that final battle, the visuals are stunning. So coming in at number two, my runner-up for my favorite comic book movie of all time is Avengers Infinity War. Uh, this is one of the movies that I've seen like the most ever in theaters. I was just so floored the first time I saw it. I, I had no idea what was going to happen, and I still am shocked by that ending. I don't know how the hell Marvel did this. It's an achievement, to say the least. But this movie, uh, directed by the Russo brothers, what they do great is they have various groups of characters on different planets, and it's really a monumental task, but they each get their time on screen, and seeing them with their little pockets, one on Titan, Wakanda. My favorite scene in this movie, though, has to be Thor's entrance on Wakanda. I get chills every time it happens, and bring me Thanos. It's just so great. So starting with my number five is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. 
something that James Gunn took a huge risk on, and the MCU took a real risk on. I didn't get a chance to see this in theaters. I didn't see it till about three years after it came out, until Guardians 2. I watched this the night before, and what was I missing? I mean, this movie is everything you wanted it to be, from the soundtrack to a group of characters to something that's different and so unique inside this, uh, this huge franchise that has literally everything from epic to not-so-great movies to awesome villains and not-so-great villains. This movie has a little bit of everything, and we get a little bit of tease of Thanos in there. And Ronin, let's be real, he's kind of a badass villain. He tries to go on his own and like, not be with Thanos. You know, try to take on the take on the boss job. And well, it does he do it? You have to watch for yourself. But this whole group getting to meet the Guardians is awesome. The prison scene is my absolute favorite when they actually come together and become the Guardians of the Galaxy and they escape. That to me is just cinema at its finest, and I can't wait for Guardians three. At my number four is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is my personal favorite uh, animated movie of all time. As you touched on, some people praise it like that, and I do. I've watched this movie probably six times, never got a chance to see it in theaters, and I kick myself to the day for that. But this movie is everything and more you want an animated movie to be, a regular movie to be, and a comic book movie to be. All these Spider-People on a screen together, something I never dreamed of happening. And when I got to see it, I mean, Spider Noir is great in the little what, Spider Pig. I don't think they call him that, but he's just hilarious voice by John Mulaney. But Miles Morales might be the most likable and relatable uh, Spider-Man we've ever got to see over Toby, over Andrew, and even over Tom Holland. Miles Morales is awesome, and I hope, I hope we get a live-action Spider-Verse movie or a live-action Miles Morales movie because that would be, that would bring in the cheddar cheese to the MCU, but that would bring all the fans, all the nerds, would come out to see that movie. And Spider-Verse is everything you want it to be. As you said, it really brings a comic book to life. And it does. And that when Miles really becomes truly Spider-Man, I mean, that scene, I think about it now and it gives me chills. It almost makes me emotional that they were able to capture that scene in an animated feature. And it's almost as impactful as when Mufasa died in The Lion King. It's so crazy. But the last thing I want to say about this is the soundtrack. This is a soundtrack of one of my favorites in any movie ever. The music in this, it gets me hyped, it gets me emotional. And it makes me want to chill, you know? You got Sunflower by Post Malone. Come on. Come on. At my number three is going to be Captain America Civil War. And I know, Chris, you touched up on it kind of a lot. So I'm not going to dive too deep into it. But this is, let's be real, Avengers Civil War. That's, and it's not really Cap's movie. And it, are you Team Iron Man or Team Cap? I'm kind of both because I love them both so much, especially after the endgame. But this movie, like you said, Black Panther, Tom Holland as Spider-Man, everyone gets introduced in their debut all fighting over the Winter Soldier and Zemo, who is a very underrated villain because he, as you said, tears everyone apart. He's not strong. He's not anything. He's just a mastermind, and that's the most powerful villain of them all. Civil War, what's not to love? It tears fans apart. tears us all apart. I mean, like, he was your friend. So was I. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Man, my runner-up is Avengers Endgame. Last year is just cinematic masterpiece my favorite movie of the 20, uh, 2019 year and endgame is the culmination of all these films leading up to this point and it, it was my favorite mcu movie but that's now taken by another spot the final battle scene that is the best final battle i've ever seen in any movie ever and i will i can back that up with anything the amount of epicness the amount of getting you to cheer my theater roared when cap said the magic words we're not gonna get into it but when he said those magic <laughs> words Man, that, my oh. theater, I mean, I about jumped out of my seat and crapped my pants, all right? It was the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever seen, ever. Uh, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, I'm sorry, is emotional, it is epic, it's a, kind of a slower burn, and I, I appreciated that approach they took, because Infinity War is so action-packed almost every scene. This one took more of a chiller route and packed a punch at the end, and and really hit home with these characters. I love Endgame so much. So we're down to our last pick, and coming in at number one for me is Avengers Endgame. Uh, talk about a conclusion done right. Uh, wink, wink, Game of Thrones. You need to learn a thing or two. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I absolutely adore this movie. I've talked about it so much that the one thing I want to hit on this time around is how it's a perfect three-act structure. That first hour, it's a three-hour movie. That first hour really hits home on the devastation that occurred and the fallout of uh, Avengers Infinity War. And you get to see these characters kind of at odds with each other. And then you see what's their plan. They start to plot. But then you get into the second act, and it's this whole time travel heist in a way where there's also some fan service as you kind of go back to the other settings from uh, various MCU movies. Uh, and then that final act is the final battle slash just, like I've heard this said before, the Return of the King-esque ending, you know, where everyone gets their send-off. It is so beautiful. I absolutely love this movie. And 
the moment when he said Avengers Assemble slash the entire portal sequence, I've never experienced a feeling like that in a movie theater before. It was almost an out-of-body experience. Avengers Endgame, it will probably always be my number one comic book movie. Number one for me is obviously going to be Thor The Dark World. I love this movie. I love what they did with it. And I'm totally yeah. kidding. I'm totally kidding. If we made it a top 10 worst comic book movies, this might be uh, the number one spot. But in all seriousness, mine is Avengers Infinity War. This is something I wasn't ready for as my 18-year-old self went to go see this in the theater. I was so naive thinking that we were going to come out on top. And what a way to just bring in the best villain in any movie ever. And I, I will fight someone to the death about that argument. Thanos didn't just beat all the Avengers with the Infinity Stones. He beat the strong ones without them. He tore apart Thor's ship within the first scene. The Hulk came in, had absolutely no chance. He killed Loki. He killed Heimdall. Everything he did within the first minute lets you know that this guy's for real. This isn't just an Avengers movie. This is Thanos' solo spotlight movie. He's the main character. He's the one we care about. And he's such a good villain, he gets you to root for him. In many ways, everything he said made sense. There's not a dull moment in this movie. It is not short on action. And it finally gets Tony and Cap tries to get them back together. And from the first New York scene with Tony and Doctor Strange fighting, or to the battle on Titan, or to the battle of Wakanda, Everything on this movie is so epic and cinematic, and it is fan service at its finest. This is my favorite movie of all time. I love Avengers Infinity War so much. I've seen it nearly 40 times. I can quote this entire damn movie. I won't do it here because I'll be about two hours and 15 minutes, but Avengers Infinity War is the culmination of so many things, and it led right into Endgame so well. When do you ever see a villain win? You don't. That's what's so done right about this movie, and I cannot express how much this movie is, and I can't wait to show it to my kids. I can't wait to show it to all my friends, and I can't wait to rewatch it tonight, man. It's, it's amazing. All right, guys, so that's a wrap for our top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time. Hope you all enjoyed, and I wanted to give a big thank you to Trevor for joining me. I had a lot of fun, man. What about you? Yeah, I had so much fun talking superhero movies. like my favorite thing to do ever. We pretty much do it on a daily basis, so it's cool. we got to finally collab anyway. No, yeah, really great collab. Hope to see more of these in the future. Yeah. But um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to Trevor's channel, Film Geeks. Uh, link will be in the description down below. And as well as this channel, Film Stock, because we've both got some content planned together as well as our own individual things. So just be on the lookout and be sure to like this video. Comment your favorite comic book movies of all time down below. And until next time, see you guys later.